in part why I make any of these uh, concepts of videos is to, if anyone that cares to listen, uh, hopefully I provide enough relevant insight uh, to where iron sharpens iron. Uh, we can go to whoever, if we are, to be around people in our own personal lives and be able to talk about these certain different types of topics that all revolve around just life in general and just feel more comfortable and equipped uh, to provide certain uh, information and just really framework set of thought processing to people to make them question uh, the behavior and intentions, actions that they do. Um, just make people more introspective with how they view and go about going through this reality. But in this particular video, I wanted to touch a bit with the uh, concept to misconception. Um, I think it's important that we all understand in a certain sense, we are all having our own set of misconceptions. Um, we all don't know everything. There's a certain sense of confusion that just innately comes with being a human being. We're all inevitably in some form of a bewildered state. Um, we really don't know what's going on. Uh, in part, that goes in tangent to the illusion, confusion that comes with any such line we can look to mark as a demarcation uh, to our experience having started and end here you know we don't really know when it is that we really started this conscious experience we don't really know when it's going to stop if it has already stopped and this is the quote-unquote hell everybody talks about we don't really know really when we go to bed when we wake up when exactly that is so there's a lot of just again with the word confuse me uh confusement um, a lot of just going along for the ride. You don't have the control, which goes back to the, you know, involuntary nature with nature. Hopefully an effective way to describe this sentiment is the uh, SpongeBob Mr. Krabs meme where he uh, is pretty much in a daze, confused, and it has a picture looking pretty hazy. That's essentially what we have for ourselves that is going on. Um, and so in part with that, we know that this is a flux. We know that change is the only thing that is constant and this is but a transformation. Uh, so with this misconceptions that we have, we look to make clarity out of the misconceptions that we have. We look to have better understanding on top of the faulty thinking that initially comes with being of this sentient sort. Um, so essentially we're trying to make a point. Essentially whatever what we look to do or say, we're looking to make a point on top of that baseline of just faultiness. Um, and I don't like necessarily disagreeing with people. I can agree with people personally speaking um, on many things. Um, we can all have our own points, but in terms of the scope of things, if we were to look to prioritize such points, uh, we would really have to be then, you know, honest, mature, fair, are always the words I love to say from the insight I have learned to grasp. We would have to be honest, mature, and fair with whatever points we look to show. And if someone has a point that's of a higher awareness uh, compared to whatever point we would look to spiel, then we should again be mature in that fact and you know prioritize what's of the most priority um but how we say things again going with the misconceptions and with antinatalism ethelism you know um with the misconceptions people like to say against what people like i would say is that nothing really matters that it's all you know pointless uh, for one misconception, like I mentioned at one point at another video with the uh, intention behind antinatalism, uh, with going over moral nihilism, the whole pointlessness, um, you know, issue. Um, the whole point to that is that, you know, as we, 
there's a duality with just language. So if someone's going to say that there's no point, then that means that there is a point. So what are we really saying? Just like how someone can say, right, that there's no truth. Well, then that's a truth. So these this language game is, which goes in part to the misconception. Um, we're, we're not going to be able to fully grasp things. The point is, uh, no pun intended, but uh, the point is, is to look at what we can make sense out of. Um, so when you have stuff like, again, another misconception um, with antinatalists, ethylists, there's always that depression, uh, very whatever type of negative connotation. And you get the point behind that, right? But we should get a, I would say, higher point uh, that anyone that looks to exercise the mentality of an antinatalist, ethylist, whoever the fuck, that that's a realist, that they are somebody uh, that has a strong mental fortitude to be able to willingly uh, verbalize such unfortunate detriments that comes with uh, being in this sense perception. Uh, so this sense of being real onto others, it's not, it's not going to be sexy. Okay, realism, reality, um, it's, it's not all glamour as we know. So it's not a sexy topic. Um, it's not a sexy mentality, rather, um, for most. So the issue with people that would look to show any form of ad hominem and look to attribute that to um, now making it seem like anything that an antinatalist or ethylist says doesn't make any sense or is just dumb, it just it doesn't make sense for where they're coming from because again um, they're they're just not aligning themselves more to the actual truth of the matter. Um, yeah, we can look to be optimist or pessimist about anything, but it's really just being a realist. And hate to say it, but it's usually on more so the pessimistic side where such reality is conveyed. Um, so you can't really get mad at the person that's looking to describe reality. They're just calling it for what it is. You can't really hate the player. As we say, you should be the one uh, looking to hate the game. Uh, but, you know, uh, for another misconception, I only had a few. I didn't want to go through too much because, you know, there's just so much you can look to talk about. Um, we know that God shouldn't equate to good. Right. With God, that encompasses everything. So it, what are we really saying now to only associate it to good things? Um, so people are just very dismissive with certain concepts. And that's for one, anyone that has any type of conventional understanding and belief, follow positioning towards any, you know, Abrahamic, any form of religion that's of any type of magnitude uh, for the masses, quote unquote. Uh, we know that God doesn't equate to good, you know, just, you know, just if you to work to make the case that, you know, this life is a miracle, you know, those types of sayings, the misconception that comes with that is the appeal to nature fallacy, as I know people that are listening to this will know. Um, it just It just does not make sense. It's not like you can't see those different underlying principles in, you know, the sacred geometry that gets placed into this miracle of life. It's not like you get, you don't get the point of what others like that would look to say, um, but it, it, it needs to be put, put in its proper place because um, it's, it's not telling the whole picture per se, even though it's looking to describe a certain sense of it, um, but it's just appealing to nature again. And we know nature gives not two fucks about what we're going through. Um, the very fact that we have to look to succumb to this nature um, just goes back to that subordinate, uh, very cuckold position that be uh, that comes with being a human. It just it just does not make sense to be in that St Stockholm syndrome of a position, and now you're glorifying it. It's just very strange from somebody like me. It's just it's just very strange. Um, for another misconception that I've already said before, and you guys have already, I'm sure, heard this all the time, with uh, imposition, consent, and it really doesn't matter which word to use, as you guys know. Um, that's really, for me personally, I've talked about it before with imposition and spirituality. Um, that That is a major concern, uh, imposition. It doesn't matter what word you like to say there. 
Um, people like saying maybe in position more because people just like to be willfully ignorant when it comes to when people say consent, but it's the same intent. Um, and when you really think about it, when you look to align those concepts in position and consent, um, when you talk about when something is being imposed for that person or thing, whatever, that initiator that is looking to use that something, uh, you know, to, you know, have that as an imposition, in a sense, they're taking the talent or substance, the essence of that something for their own benefit. Uh, so when, of course, you talk about the, um, you know, our parents, uh, they're taking the essence of whatever it is that we are uh, to have to come to this experience to go through the contract of birth and death. So whatever essence that is behind the spirit of you and I uh, is what they're pulling for their own benefit, because initially it's just their own benefit. It doesn't matter what we would look to look to do uh, when we create somebody. It's the very fact that we're creating them for our own sake. Uh, hence with the uh, imposition, which is why it's akin to things like rape or murder. I hate to say it, but it's a similar scenario. And for people that look to take issue with stuff like that, it's just, again, not very um, fair, given the severity of the conversation that this is. It's not mature because it's it's a reality, whether you would like to accept it or not. And it's not being honest because you should be able to see the principle behind why it's aligning to such a act like rape or murder. It's an imposition. It's not a cool thing. It's not a good thing to do to somebody else. Um, so again, with that talent essence per se, that's being in a way exploited, um, you talk about something as simple as just breathing. Um, when you talk about for concepts like behind soul and spirit, it's going back to wind and it's going back to breath. So in a sense, you just talk about how a sentient creature breathes. It's, it's not a whole breath, right? It's not just an infinite breath. Um, it, it's an in and out contraction. So you see the limitation um, and deprivation that comes with this creation um, you see how, in a sense, it's able to utilize some type of potent source, but clearly it's um, very malficient still at its core. And, you know, we're playing it out, uh, such deficiencies and um, inadequacies throughout our livelihood. So um, that, in part, is an important misconception as well. Just the imposition factor that comes with this, it's... um. It's not a good thing. It's just, it's, it's just, that's really the basis for sim someone like me personally. Um, so to see that it gets ridiculed a lot is, is very unfortunate. Um, another misconception thought process. And again, with these, it's not like they don't have a point for anyone that would look to be opposing to someone like me. I just feel like for whatever I would look to say, not to be um, pretentious or what have you, but it's just of a higher awareness and importance to look to verbalize to people. Uh, so next, you have the misconception of balance. Uh, people look to always say that, you know, it's a give and take world. You have to receive. You have to then uh, give what you receive type of thing. The balance, right? Risk and reward. There's really no good and evil per se. Um, yeah, there is a balance with things, of course. But w what does that really mean? Um, let alone the fact that you talk about the balance of the animal kingdom, the, the, the food pyramid, like, well, that's a form of a balance, but is that good? Um, and again, for people that look to say that there's no good or evil, that's, that's just again, any of these types of concepts we're talking within human subjectivity. So I'm not talking about good or evil within a cosmic, no one is a cosmic fucking anthropomorphic deity type of sense that's dumb we're talking of course within our human subjectivity we know what is bad we know what is good uh, so for us to look to make it that none of these these things make sense or it's not there no words have purpose words have meaning um so balance is there but this whole balance game of life is really skewed um and it's a ponzi scheme that's even a form of a balance i mean this pyramid shit is just it's not a good thing to just put it simply. Um, and to go further with another misconception, you have the, of course, conception 
of suffering, the concept of, um, and how you have plenty of people that say that apparently they don't suffer. Um, I made a video on that as well. And again, the essence of suffering is you're in a mode that you would rather not be in and with not you know, wanting to be in that area of experience, you're more than likely longing for another set of experience that's opposing to that. So that's in essence suffering. So you can look to talk about specific types of phenomenons within that banner, but that's the banner, that's the gist. And that's what we're all going through. It doesn't matter who it is per se. Uh, so when someone looks to say that they don't have any suffering per se on their life, you get the point that they make to say about that, but is that really truthfully the highest point? It's really not. Um, it's not, and especially like how we like to say we're all connected, then why are you only focused on your own personal livelihood when you see all the travesty around you? And if you say that you don't see travesty around, it just goes to how people are just so blind and ignorant and just uh, willfully dishonest because that just doesn't make sense. Um, doesn't make sense. Um, so, I mean, it just goes back to things like the law of entropy and how it, it, the whole breath concept, if we don't breathe, right, uh, we were to look to reach equilibrium, right, if the entropy were to just live out, then we wouldn't be here, right? So we're we're essentially getting kicked out of existence while we're looking to maintain our existence, which is just the crux of the insanity that goes on. Uh, with this sent sentient experience. But you have, again, you have the law of entropy. Um, so that should let you know that suffering is the baseline. Something as simple as just the breath. If you don't breathe, then you're gonna, you know, and so we're compelled to have to, you know, reach this homeostasis and maintain it, even though it's always in a current uh, up and down pendulum. It's never a, just a constant thing. Uh, so, it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And in part with the concept of suffering and how it's a bit of a misconception, people can look at uh, themselves now and say that they're not suffering. But if it was to be the case that they were living 100 years in the past, uh, now they're going to say, now they're going to say that, oh, I was um, actually uh, suffering then, but it really wasn't anything different than what they're currently experiencing right now. Uh, so it looks to show how in regards to different timelines, we look to pinpoint why we think one livelihood is better to live than the other when in essence, it's essentially all but the same in terms of how we uh, go about this sense perception uh, experience. Uh, and then for the next uh, form of misconception that really doesn't make sense to me at all is how people will look to say that this is futile, uh, that people like me that look to address these concerns would say, oh, well, if not everyone's on board, then what's the point? If you're not going to look to end all uh, bad, then what's the point of even attempting to do anything in the first place? Uh, well, as many of you may know for the, I think it's the starfish story um, of how essentially if you're able to change one factor, if you're able to change one livelihood in somebody, the ripple effect of that the magnitude of that is something that we can't really even fully grasp. Uh, so with antinatalism, ethalism, any of that sense, you're, you're looking to s prevent suffering. And that's something that really we can't quantify in our own human confines. So that, that's something that isn't futile. You're, you're now preventing a whole livelihood to have to go through any form of harm uh, that was not needing to be placed. Uh, so even if it's just for whatever X amount of lives that that is, uh, for whatever that you are able to do or I, that's not futile in my perspective. And then for the next misconception I had, which kind of goes in sense with the futility, uh, with how people can say that energy doesn't die, that, you know, only energy can turn into matter and then vice versa. It goes back to just being based energy, kind of akin to the uh, generic subjective continuity, reincarnation, essentially. Um, of course, that has a certain point to it. But again, it just goes back to if we're able to prevent harm, then why are we not doing that? So just because, oh, energy is always going to carry on, that doesn't mean that we're going to be reckless with that. We're going to be, we should rather uh, be responsible and accountable for whatever amount of power to such energy we're able to exercise for ourselves 
and also uh, for the benefit or lack thereof of others. Um, so those were just a few misconceptions that were on my mind that I wanted to spill out a bit. Uh, but further going on to the drawing of the line to the demarcation, um, again, with the uh, fuzzy point of that line and how we don't necessarily know things around, again, things of when we go to bed, go to sleep, or when we go to, through rebirth, essentially. Um, in terms of how we would look to draw this line, we would have to have reason. Uh, first and foremost, that's, that's the tool that we would have to utilize uh, more than anything. And it seems that oftentimes than not, um, man as a whole selectively only utilize uh, reasoning for a certain uh, senses. It's not like we always use reasoning for everything. So it shows the bias that comes with being in a human perception and just the um, self-delusion that comes into play. But um, again, reason should be the line uh, the whole quote unquote facts over feelings, but even people that say stuff like that, aka Ben Shapiro, they're innately living in such feelings because they're in a you know carnal form. So what are they really talking about? They're a bit misconceived, right? Uh, a bit of a misconception on their part to look to say facts over feelings, but then with what they look to uh, accordingly do on top of that thought form, they they they're not doing acts over feelings because facts over feelings. Excuse me, because Again, you're, you're, you're imposing this feeling, sense, perception of this deficient limitation of a human flesh on other, other people. Uh, so it's still people like Ben Shapiro going through with feelings. So again, it's not really reason uh, that man as a whole looks to utilize. Uh, so again, it makes that line of demarcation, just misconceptions uh, run amok more. Um, but we should know simple things like how we, we don't agree with each other on everything, right? So these are just simple points that we know. We, we're not going to agree with, with each other on everything. Uh, so that, that shouldn't be a good reality to have to unfortunately settle in, uh, given that there are important topics that we would have to look to discuss amongst each other, um, despite any such disagreement. Um, and these topics aren't centered around stuff like, you know, debating against what type of artist is the best type of artist. Oh, what's better, Pepsi or Coke? What type of sports team do you like over another? Even in the political spectrum of what's left or right and what you know place would you fall between those lines? It's a bigger conversation than that. And um, for those like myself, we're looking to address you know bigger concerns. Uh, the very fact that we're even having to do this contract of just living in a deficient mode, that's of a greater concern than anything that we would look to prioritize within this deficient mode. Um, so for how I view that line uh, to the demarcation to reasoning and how we would look to have any form of morality, um, it has to just come down to the fact of, well, is whatever the hell that I would like to do an infliction of harm to somebody else. Um, so that, that would have to be the line for me. If whatever I would like to say um, is in essence, putting somebody to have to be in a form of a restriction, um, then that that should be the, the line that should be shown for letting people know that you're not on the right path, that you are overstepping the boundaries, right? Because you're crossing the line, uh, because you are looking to restrict others um, and just the very concept of disagreeing. So we know like that that comes with the territory with this, you know, experience that we're living currently. And I mean, just like I've mentioned before, like how we don't agree with on everything, just natalists themselves, pro-natalists, whoever, uh, they, they don't, you know, they have their own cultural uh, significance, uh, significance uh, that they differ on. Um, even just when it comes to very touchy, important, significant personal topics like like I mentioned before with work, politics, but specifically religion, you have things that are more so the exoteric, but then you have the esoteric, and then you have people that are bantering back and forth because of that. You have people that are on the anthropomorphic side, you have people that just do base theology, then you have the metaphysical side, or just philosophy, and creationism, and Darwinism. So you have all these different people that are, again, natalists, they're continuing doing this process, but they're still bewildered. Um, but they're okay with having these 
very important sets of disagreements that we're apparently not able to uh, fully agree with. So it's the whole concept of, you know, agree to disagree. Um, but for any of these topics, you should be able to see the essence to why it's being, you know, spilled out to the public and you should be able to see the wisdom and insight that it provides because it really doesn't matter whatever topic it is. Um, there's going to be truth in it, but you just, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Um, I think it goes back, though, to the worship of idolatry. Uh, we even have that for ourselves. It's not necessarily that we're doing anyone per se like a celebrity, even though that, of course, happens. But we have a certain idea of ourselves and we worship that essence per se. Uh, so that is in part that desire, conflict, risk, reward, dilemma that we find ourselves in uh, because it comes with the polarity. Um, like if you were to mention it, like I did with the celebrity side of things with idolatry and how you know many people glorify celebrity and worship that sense of people, uh, you have two different camps usually. You have those that look to glorify them, but then on the other side, you have those that look to stigmatize them. Um, and you have that for your own self. So you have a part of you that may look to do things that you like to do and that's why you like part of you but then you have other parts of your own sense uh that sees things that you're trying to change and in part you are a bit frustrated or um essentially not pleased you're not satisfied content with how you do certain things so it's that same you know dualistic energy uh with the praise of idol worship and again that's still the concept of self um and that's with all of this it's just going back to self um I, I personally can care less about talking about certain different types of topic, about numerology. You have stuff like, you know, if you've heard of gematria, uh, metaphysics is kind of like philosophy. So that that's something that not necessarily. But what I'm trying to say is knowledge. Um, people like me get told to be as a knowledge seeker, but that's more so than anything an imposition. I was kind of placed to have to be a knowledge seeker, just like anyone I'm sure that is watching this, a truth seeker, as people say. Um, but that's not something that you have the quote unquote choice of having to exercise. It's a bit of a involuntary factor that comes with it because it's, it's kind of like when uh, a horse eats a carrot on a stick. It, it, you're kind of compelled naturally to have to live out a certain persona. Um, that, uh, genetic determinism there's there's not necessarily a free will aspect to it because for somebody like me with whatever knowledge i mean again this is all an internal process like i've said in another video before in the imposition and spirituality um it's all an internal process at the end of the day and that's all i usually hear whenever i'm ever um listening to quote unquote truth is again it just goes back to how we're supposed to be more internal uh, so then why why are we then seeking all this knowledge, seeking all of this this stuff? It just it just seems very shallow, um, given that we're in this again animal suit that has to eat, excrete, steal, kill, exploit, you know, like we're we're having to do unfortunate things um that we know are you know very again unfortunate, but it's just that desire hunger game that comes with this that we we just don't care. Um, we just don't care. But that's why, again, I just think it's important to voice out your truth. I just don't see it that most people are doing it uh, to the full level of authenticity that I know their competency uh, could make them do. So it leaves people like me very confused going back to that bewilderment um, sentiment. Uh, but relating back to religion and just how the, with misconceptions, things get so so unnecessarily mixed up for no reason. I mean, you talk about just the concept of what is Jesus, what that embodies, Christ consciousness. That's really what anyone can look to embody themselves because this all goes back to self. So if you are looking to, you know, be one with that, then that's just being of someone that's of a caring mind. You know, you're, you teach love onto others. And well, what is an, of a more compassionate uh, empathetic, loving type of concept uh, than that which those like you and I look to talk about with, you know, these types of topics. Uh, but clearly, as it has shown in the books, 
uh, with livelihoods, quote unquote, that were uh, described with Jesus, they get ostracized. They get, you know, they get exiled in a sense. They they get exed out because the, whatever they look to provide is really not compatible for how most people look to live. So uh, such said Christ consciousness is is not, it's not really, not really something that most people are on board with. And, you know, that just goes to show the situation but um to end it a bit i wanted to talk with sympathy and empathy uh, many times you will hear of course with these different talks of antinatalism ethelism empathy how you know those that are of this are very empathetic um but there is an important distinction bef between sympathy and empathy and uh, more so when it comes to sympathy uh, a particular um, way that I can look to describe it is using two words, if you were to use at least. Uh, so when it comes to sympathy, that's more so in my eyes, leaning to somebody that is of that pro-natalist mindset, uh, where they're looking to essentially take whatever good they can out of any situation. So if somebody uh, is of an unfortunate misfortune, uh, somebody that's sympathetic, looking to, you know, make that person feel well, they're, they're coming from that quote unquote, at least energy. So they'll let that person know, well, at least, you know, you don't have to do that, or at least you have the ability to do this. Uh, so when you talk about it within the framework of this conversation that, you know, anti-natalism, ethelism, uh, you'll have those people, again, natalist sympathizers, essentially, uh, that will look to say things like, you know, well, at least you're yourself, uh, have whatever amount of things you may have in your personal life that is great for your own personal sake. Um, you know, they're essentially will make it be like, oh, at least not all things are bad. Um, but there there really isn't any sympathy in that type of perspective that should be um, given in this type of conversation. It should really only be relying around empathy, which is just connection, relation, trying to understand uh, where other people are coming from and just just the understanding alone not trying to give them any s delusion self fantasy no you're just you're just being real with them and you're getting where they're coming from and you're you're feeling from you know what they have to experience um so again there's no room for any such quote unquote at least um to look to justify any infliction of unnecessary harm here it's just very solipsistic because for somebody that would look to exercise that mentality um, they themselves probably aren't going through that much bad. So in part, why they're looking to say, quote unquote, well, at least is because they're, you know, sufficient in some relative way themselves. So, you know, they're, they're, they're okay. They're, you know, their sustenance has been fulfilled for whatever long temporary, uh, temporarily. Uh, so it, it just goes back to that selfish nature that comes with everything here. But, um, uh, again, empathy is the ultimate perspective to this life because as we know, we are all here together. Uh, so that's why I feel the need to talk about this at all and make videos that are of this long ramble session because uh, not enough people are doing it or caring about it. And so you have people like me that are just, you talk about, again, misconceptions, just not understanding um, not comprehending fully to why the state of affairs is to how we see it today and has had been before. But um, yeah, you can let me know what you may think from what I've said. But yeah, just a bunch of misconceptions that I see. Uh, and for those that look to provide clarity, which is just truth, if you're able to provide truth ultimately to people, uh, essentially, if you have wisdom, you have insight, uh, then you should have maturity, right? Honesty, you should be fair. And coming back with such insights, such experience of whatever wisdom, um, I don't see how you don't come out of it when you learn to understand what there is to understand. And again, have whatever set of positive connotation. Uh, there's too much cost that comes with this, too much inefficiency, uh, lack of just proper care and adequacy uh, that I see for any type of, again, positive contribution um, in terms of justifying this process. Um, it's, just, it's just overstepping your boundaries. And that's a lot of what's going on, just people that are overstepping their boundaries. And they have to get called out on it. So that's in part what people like me are doing.